Don't get anything caught in that, whatever you do. Well, uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is day three of the second International Bases Conference 2015. Thank you all for coming. I know some people have turned up just today. I've been meeting and greeting you in the foyer, and I just want to say it's great you're here. Um, we have another very, very interesting day lined up for you. We have some great speakers, including David Shaler, Graham Nichols, Max Spears and Sarah Adams, and... Um, uh, Robert Duncan, Dr. Robert Duncan from the United States is going to come back in here for a second uh, talk, which is going to be on a different subject, which I'm sure you'll find very interesting. Um, there is some sad news I've got to bring you this morning. Uh, Roddy Piper has died. Now, Rowdy Roddy Piper was a Canadian wrestler and also an actor, and he starred in the 1988 film They Live. Have you seen it? He's the man with this, who, he's the star of that film, who plays John Narda, the the guy who discovers the sunglasses. So very sad. He's only 61 years old. Um, great, a great guy. So very, very aware. If you ever get the DVD of They Live, watch the making of documentary because it contains interviews with him, which shows that he was aware of the themes of that of that film, which is enjoying a wonderful comeback. So very sorry to hear all that. Now, <coughs> there's going to be a special dinner this evening at the Marlborough. Is it the Marlborough Mile Miles? Yeah. It is yeah. But you're going to have to order it by midday. Okay. Uh, order it by midday and get it, um, get it in there so uh, that they know to prepare it in advance. And um, you can come and see me and I'll give you a menu or, or you can get one from reception which shows you exactly how to order your food and it gives you a list of all the different foods on the menu. Okay. Right, uh, so uh, our first speaker is ready. Now this is Miriam Janser. Now she is an artist and a transformational coach and a healer. And... Um, if you were here for the Film Festival Awards uh, yesterday, you'll, you'll know that Miriam is the artist that designed those beautiful bronze trophies that we were giving out to the winners. Okay. That we were giving out to the winners. And um, so, uh, Miriam, you, you, um, this, is, uh, this is your time. <laughs> <laughs> you mean I, I can, I can start to yeah. talking? Okay, thank you very okay. much, Ben. Thank you very much. Um, I'm asked to go and stand in the light, but I'm going to ask the light to follow me on the middle of the stage, because I like to have the whole stage, if possible. If I'm standing here, everybody can see me well? Yeah. Good, because I can't see you anymore. <laughs> uh, yesterday and the day before yesterday, I did a grounding, uh, and I would like to do that now again, because I can see some familiar faces, some new faces, and uh, um, I'll do the grounding first, and then continue with my lecture. Um, so please put your feet on the ground, just to safeguard everything that's happening here today, which is a continuation of what happened yesterday and the day before. And it's sacred what's happening here, because the exchange of ideas and energies is really high. It's a very special crowd, and everything that's happening here will radiate beyond Marlborough, beyond Wiltshire, beyond England. So blessed are you being here and you grounding it and making this a sacred place makes it even worthwhile, much more than ever before. Thank you. But I'm going to make a little drawing about where we are today. Did you? That works. Circles are not really circles anymore, but that's it. You can get the picture. Good. Because this is where I want to talk about. I've, I'm a healer. I'm a clairvoyant. I'm a clairknower. And I coach people to get familiar with the information that comes through in a reading but also through their own sensations. Therefore, I use me, say the center, and I can say, okay, if this is you, you can say this is, this is my body, this is my physical body. Whoop. <coughs> and my physical body is a receiver of information and also a transmitter of information. That's the starting point. 
because I'm a healer, I can see into the other bodies as well. So I can see in the etheric and the emotional and the mental and the spiritual, but it goes beyond that. So it goes far beyond the spiritual body. Why I really like to be on stage right now is because the people that I see in my readings are showing me that indeed the things that I read and hear from people are true. It is happening, we are expanding our consciousness that is getting into an awareness inside us in every cell of our body is radiating a different kind of energy that makes, makes us receivers of another kind than we were before that makes us transmitters of things, energies, ideas, concepts that have not been known to people before. And I'm sure you know all these stories, you know that is happening, but what is interesting for me is how do we deal with it? Uh, how do we know to cope with the changes that are happening? And I can tell you that uh, every time I come to England, because I'm drawn to England somehow, um, every time I'm here, I'm going through an experience that gives me like a shiver or I get stumped or I get hit or I see things that really shake me or um, I get really ill. I had a huge migraine two weeks ago and I knew it was just a cleansing that I had to get into another physical body by cleansing the energies that I took with me for during the trip, whatever. And by accepting that these kind of things happen to me, it made it bearable. But I can see a lot of people who don't have the gifts that I have or are developing these kind of gifts. And I think everybody has these gifts, but gee, yes, I was born with it. And at the same time, you know, I had to develop them as well. I didn't, um, I couldn't do what I did, what I do now when I was in high school, although, although I did some work in high school, but I know nothing about what was happening, how I influenced the energies in the space and how they influenced me. So happily, I learned some about that, but everybody is learning that right now, and I think it's very important that people are learning how to deal with the energies that go beyond the spiritual body. Why? It's because I noticed that there are a lot of life forms that are occurring more and more um, and they have an influence on society and um, Mr. Duncan was talking about it, Rob Duncan was talking about it yesterday, uh, Harold was talking about it, um, there have been a lot of uh, speakers at the Glastonbury Symposium that talked about the changes. The physical structure of people is changing. That means the way that we deal with the information that's coming in is changing as well. For me, it's very interesting to know that this is changing because as a healer, I have to adapt to the things that are happening. And just getting to know people that are partly alien, partly cyborg, partly constructed, have no life on earth uh, ever before and are walking around here so as kind of somebody, what am I doing here? or decided, yeah, okay, I want to be here for a few months or years and then I'm gone because I don't like it here, or yes, I want to be here because I want to make a change. That's very interesting. So the healing job that I used to have, so it's like, okay, heal an illness, you know, or heal some emotional pain, or heal a karmic issue, that's still happening. But all these issues now seem to have a connection with an existence that goes far beyond the spiritual body. So most of the people that come to see me have a connection to other planets, other galaxies, other energies, other dimensions, and other levels. And I think it's very important to know how to deal with it because everything that changes profoundly comes with fear. So how do we do with the fear? Well, that's the thing that is one of the biggest issues right now, and one of my biggest um, challenges as well, how do I assist people in going to a process of allowing fear? But first, um, I want to come back to the healing thing, because I think everybody will recognize that they have had a healing some somehow, by someone, sometime, right? Who has never 
really realized they had a healing. See? Good. So everybody here knows the experience of receiving a healing. It can be a mother hugging you or a partner being really nice. Uh, it can be um, bobbing on the waves of the sea, that the sea is caressing you, which happened to me a few months ago when I was having... And I thought this was a really um, interesting... You know, it's for me, it's, I can be in my mind and say, okay, I understand a little bit of what's going on, but I need to be in my awareness to really deal with it. And sometimes I forget. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I lose track and say, okay, but now, you know, I don't want to be dealing with it. I just want to be. And then I'm confronted with everything that is out of balance in me. And at that time, I was having like a kind of cramps in my leg, like not okay. My knee was hurting, my foot wasn't okay. And I thought, why can I not just, you know, I like to move, dance, whatever. And I couldn't, like I was a little bit paralyzed and it was annoying, terribly. So I went to the beach and I went into the sea and I was a kind of, okay, I'm surrendering. But there were jellyfish, because the wind came from the east and Holland, lots of jellyfish. So the wind changed, and I thought, okay, now is a good moment, I'll go into the sea. And I love it, just laying there in the, in the sea and just let the salt water clear my aura. It's, for me, that's a very good thing to do. I, I was giving in to this and just thinking, all the jellyfish are gone. What happened is that a jellyfish came close to me and what, it hit my leg all the way down. And it was a, <laughs> just a magnetic wave through this leg, like, oh my gosh. So yes, I was shocked and I ran out of the sea and, oh, and I went to my friend and said, like, jellyfish bit me, a jellyfish bit me. And she said, oh, a little bit of panic. But I said, no, 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 no wait a minute. Let's see why the jellyfish bit me. So I tried to just be on my towel on the beach and say, okay, lower the, the adrenaline and just let it go. And then I noticed that it was an electric wave going through my leg, up and down, healing the cramp that I had. So the pain that the jellyfish caused me was balancing the pain that I already had in my leg. And I could give in. And it kind of was amazing. I thought, this is in a nutshell what I want to talk about. Brilliant. It was a bit funny, I must admit. Those kind of experiences are a little bit like, do I have to go through them? Yes, and you've heard many stories like that. Um, but we have to go through experiences like that because we are human. We have this body to celebrate these kind of experiences. What is really challenging for me is that I come across people who have experiences that are beyond nice. Um, the really the targeted individuals have to go through an ordeal that is, well, not that something that we have been talked about uh, at school. We didn't learn how to deal with that. And that's the thing right now that it would be so... We're, we've been talking about, you know, we need to change the world and we need to change it fast because it has to happen now. And you are a very special crowd. You are a special crowd, the ones that are looking at the, at the tape as well, because you are awake. Yes, you are. <laughs> and because you are awake, you can take it in. And you can say, okay, we understand where this is going about, and we will carry this message, uh, and not even by talking about it, but just by knowing it, by incorporating it. The, the challenge right now is not to stay in this circle, let's say the inner circles where the bodies are, and but go here, whoops, go there. And I'm going to turn this off. And then. And then. Ta da.
<laughs> so you can leave the screen for a moment. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait, I can. Yes. Yeah, OK. Uh, this is a very simple drawing, but it says so much about you being in the middle of a circle, your body being a circle. You know the chakras. You're familiar with the fact that we, we are developing new chakras. I looked on websites yesterday, and I saw that the, the websites that talk about the new chakras don't tell the same story. <laughs> um, so some say, no, here, no, 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 there, no, 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 it's up there, no, 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 we're gonna... You know. I was like, okay, make up your mind. Well, obviously, it's still impossible to make up your mind about the changes that are happening right now, which is a very important thing to keep in mind. What is important right now is that uh, the chakras that are developed in a lot of people are the eight chakra, the new heart, the emerald heart, uh, the timus, timus, um, and it will give you a better reception of love and kindness and it will radiate a universal love. So that's a change in the way that we deal with others. There's also a chakra that's developing underneath your feet that will help you ground in a different way so it will give you a possibility to root yourself into this earth in another way. But what's very important, and that's, you can imagine the circle that you go beyond the screen, right? Get beyond the screen. Underneath your feet, there is also the entrance to the knowledge of the earth, the wisdom in the earth. And I'm talking about the crystal wisdom. If I talk about an emerald heart, that's a crystal energy as well. And if you go underneath your feet, there is the wisdom in the earth, which is a crystal wisdom. In, you can imagine every, uh, how do you say that, sand, uh, grain. grain, thank you, <laughs> um, is everything is encoded in every sand grain. So if you tune into that and say, okay, I, wanna, I want to have some assistance in healing my whole body, my whole system, uh, inspire me to know from the heart where to go, then the energies in the earth will inspire you to heal your whole body, your whole auric field, your whole being, and with that, the world. So the codes in the grain are there already for such a long time, but now, the, because the veils between this dimension and the other dimensions are getting thinner, it's even... <laughs> it's even easier to get to this information. Uh, I worked with a lady in Holland, she is a, a therapist, she worked with angelic energies. Um, I don't work with angels, I work with guides or with energies, with presences, and it can be from many different uh, origins. So it can be like a, a past um, mother, or somebody who died. Uh, it can be a spirit, it can be a ghost, it can be a galactic being, it can be all kinds of things, it can be a tree spirit. Um, so it has many layers there. What's happening now is that she, this lady was getting in trouble because she was trying to work with these energies, but these energies were evolving as well. And she said, Miriam, I get so drained and I don't know what to do anymore. And they attack me at night. And, and she was just getting an overload of energies because over there, at, because the veils are getting thinner, they're getting closer to us. It's much easier to travel to us and meet and greet us if we allow them. Some say they don't really want to communicate, but they are present, so if we communicate, they will give us the answers by mirroring what is happening in us. And this lady was just overwhelmed by all the changes because she had her crown chakra wide open and just said, yeah, but that's my work, I have to do this, I'm, I just need to get all the information in. And I said, well, close your crown chakra and go down to your new chakra beneath your feet and connect to the crystal energies, which is the same 
frequency as the angelic beings go to the inner earth, which is the other dimension of the energies in the earth, because a, st a step beyond the energy of the grains of sand, um, and connects with that. Close a little over there and connect with the inner earth. And she said, Miriam, I slept for the first time in months. I had a good night's sleep. I feel better in my feet. I can work, but I can close down. And that's one of the things that is very important for people like you, working and talking to other people, is that you need to ground. But you need to ground even more than you ever did before. Why? Because your bodies are radiating in a much higher speed and a much higher frequency than ever before. Then we get to the point of what's keeping you. And then I get to my, one of my favorite subjects, <laughs> which I didn't finish last year, is the crop circle makers. I have to talk about some crop circles. Why? Because um, the circle, as I, drew, I did draw some circles, uh, a circle, when you draw, draw a circle, it's the unity, it's everything, it's, it's the universe. You're familiar with the symbol of the circle. I use circles also to uh, invite people to experience some energies by uh, drawing circles on the floor and work with constellations. I don't know if people know about family constellations. I put pre representatives of something in a circle, and if you step, let's say, I, I put a circle down here, and I step into it, I can step into a different kind of energy, and I can step out of it, and I can witness myself being in that circle, and I can step back into the energy and say, whoa, it is different. For instance, I can put myself here in the future. I say, oh, that feels good. And I go back and say, then why do I worry today? Because it feels right to be there. And it's not something that I think, it's something that goes through my body with all the sensations. And that's uh, the fun of working with, for instance, a circle. But I did it with a, uh, uh, someone that did a workshop with me and I drew a circle somewhere in a, a path uh, in the woods. We were outside. Um, and I said, okay, you need to work on this, you need to feel this. And I drew a little circle in the, in, just in the sand. And we did the work. She stood there, she had an experience, got an insight, stepped out. And then I wiped the circle away. And I said, okay, thank you, Earth, for carrying this and giving us this possibility to work with you. We walked away and I came back um, maybe... Uh, but three months later, and I was a little bit curious, I thought, if the circles are so important, then can I go back and sense it? And I went back to the same place, and I stepped into the place where the circle was, and pock, the energy was there. I said, wow, this is fascinating. And again, I stepped out, I thanked the earth, and went on. I came back even half a year later, and walk to the same place and say, okay, I'm curious what's happening now. To my surprise, somebody had drawn a huge circle there. <laughs> uh, to, to, I think they used it for um, horses, to make a big circle with horses. But it was right at the spot where I made my little circle. And I mean, the woods were great, uh, huge. Why? pick that place. So that was fascinating for me. Why the circle makers? Why do I like to say something about circle makers? Because to me, a lot of the circles are made by divine human beings. And it's not the question whether the circles are made by people or by aliens. It is the beauty of the fact that the circle makers who are human allowed themselves to be inspired by something that was bigger than them. And instead of putting them down in a newspaper and, and um, well, say nasty things, <laughs> I, I really respect them greatly because those circle makers made the connection between the universal creative energies and the earth. 
And they pioneered in that sense without ego, because there was not a name written next to the crop circle. And wow, that gave away something of the significance of these circles. It was meant to inspire them, and it was meant to inspire us from the earth energies to just the community that existed, to contact with the aliens, other creativity. It was brilliant, because that's what art is about. That's what art was about, because art was without ego. We made it an ego thing. We made even healing and, and alignment and whatever ego thing. Bull, this is brilliant, pioneer, adventurous work, and they made it for themselves to enjoy to really give us an opportunity to go out. But it wasn't meant for us. It was meant for them to have an adventure. And in that way, they are a brilliant example of how it can work if you're not trying to impress the world, but just go for whatever you like to create and step across the border lines that are there, the borders that everybody said, no, 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 don't go there. No, no, you're not allowed to do this. No, 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 no go. Uh, I don't know if you can say that, but just go. <laughs> really. And then I said, just, but why the fuss? And I really have to step up for those people who made a communication that made this creativity possible. So I respect them. That's going to be funny. <laughs> I really liked that. And I thought, what is it that makes those circle makers go into the field and make those circles? Having all these kind of strange experiences as well, because I know they've, they, they have time shifts and so worked with, with uh, alien appearances in the field and a lot of strange things happen. But those strange things happen with us as well. And it's just not connected to the circles. But I know everybody of you present here today had experiences. It's like, whoa, wait a minute, that's not normal. Yes, well, th that is exactly. If you list all those things and talk to somebody else who has the same experience, like, wait a minute, there's something going on. And you look around and you'll see that people are having more and more of those experiences. And why isn't it working to change the world? Because of fear. And why are we fearful? And the funny thing is, the fear is our key to get back into the unity that we came from. And because I've, I've, I've been thinking about it, why? Because it bothered me too. I mean, I've been really scared by things, um, and also, you know, emotionally, like, oh, do you dare to do this? Oh, can I do this? Uh, um, speaking up. Oh. Uh, but also, you know, um, having standards. I've, he I've heard brilliant scientists talk. I think, I wish I, wish I could do that. I can't. But I try to do what I can do, which is to go with my, uh, which then the right brain, <laughs> uh, and be creative. And that is one of the ways to get true fear. It's the, I did a workshop in my uh, studio in Amsterdam, and there was a lady, and I, I, I read the people that come to a workshop and I give them assignments. So I coach them a kind of true a process of which I don't know where it is about. And this lady, um, I had to tell her, you, do, you have to make a scary snowman. So I don't want to make a scary snowman. I said, yeah, well, you know, try. Nah, I don't want to make a... Well, you know, 10 minutes. Make 10 minutes, make, it, make a snowman. You know, all kinds of material, go for it. So, okay, then 10 minutes. And she started making a, a snowman with cloth and, and, and all kinds of jewelry and sticks and, and clay and whatever. And I just pushed her to go even make him scary. Just really, he has to frighten me to, to, to the end. Go for it. And she made this sculpture of really, and it got uh, trees and eyes and like, oh, really gross. And so at the end, I said, okay, put it on a chair, we'll make a picture. And she put it on a chair and put a cloth 
on, on the chair so we could make a nice picture. And she, she bent down to put the cloth on the floor. And, she, and suddenly she said, oh! And she said, what's happening? I said, now I know why I made a snowman. I said, okay, you like to share? <laughs> she said, I had a bridal shop. And I was broke, I and have a divorce, uh, I had to leave my shop, and I was so frustrated with all those brides coming, oh, I want to have a nice dress. And she really had to run like crazy to get all her, the ends meet. And she was so frustrated and so hurt and disappointed in society that she had to leave the shop, her husband, all the money gone, whatever. And she said, I thought I was over it, but it wasn't. And she sat there and cried and said, this is so amazing. I know now that I can resolve it. It's done. And what I like about this is this is creativity. You don't have to know what you are doing. You can invite it to happen. And the same goes with the fear. The basic of fear is being left alone. Why are you fearful? You're fearful because if the biggest fear is to be left alone. The biggest fear is to feel lonely. And we know in our mind, of course, nah, there's this unity, we're all together, so everything fine. But if you are in that darkest point where fear hits you, you feel so isolated and so away from everything that gives you comfort, is I don't want to be here. And that's exactly the trick that's been played on, on us again and again and again and again. And since we are hearing more stories that are really scary, the challenge to allow fear into your system is even bigger than ever before. So I am... So I'd like to invite you to allow fear into your system. And know that fear is just a part of being human. Being fearful means also connecting with this loneliness of you and source. And if you allow the loneliness into your being, you don't have to feel so homesick. Because it will make you realize that being homesick makes you feel that you're part of a bigger unity. You came from source and source is there to guide you when you allow it to. And when you allow the loneliness, it will be there to comfort you, not by taking away the loneliness, but by taking away the charge of it. And if you are able, like I've seen many uh, people, targeted individuals and abductees and others that went through experiences that really took them away from a community or society or a group, rejected, thrown out, dustbin is there. That's the sensation that you have to allow into your system and say, okay, I don't mind being dust. I am dust. I came from dust. It's okay. And then the light can come through. How much, how am I on time? Because I need to... Gosh! And I think we really have to speed up. <laughs> okay. Do you relate to this a little? Yes? Because I think it's, it's one of the most important things that our society teaches us to belong to groups, to cultures, to civilizations, to whatever. And that's what I really liked about the crop circle makers, is that they stepped away from it. 
like a lot of other individuals did as well. Um, but to step away and say, no, I don't mind whether the police are standing around the corner to get me, I'm going to do what I need to do, because I want to I wanna do it, that's it, that's it. But why is it that the loneliness keeps us back? It's because in the moment of feeling alone, you can't see that somebody else is alone as well. It's not, it's not, that's not there, it's not the possibility. So by knowing it before it happens, you can say, okay, I, I can rehearse it, I can uh, just discipline myself in going through this, through this experience. And I can even look for some downtown, alone town time and be by myself more to discipline myself in working with this. And I can tell you, those who dare to be alone are the ones that can speak up. And this whole thing about, and it will take time to get there. It will take time. And that's, for most human beings, it is like, shh, do I have to go through this process? I know, um, you know, uh, one of you yesterday was in pain, but to try to celebrate it, by the attempt to celebrate it and embrace it, the pain was owned. It became part of the process. It was his pain is part of his story. And that way, it didn't need to be painful beyond just a painful body. And then you can heal the body by healing the emotional and the, the mental. So your thoughts about it, your feelings about it, and the spiritual body, by just allowing the body to go through the process. And that's a wonderful thing, but it takes time. I, 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 I'm really intrigued by those who, like, uh, I'm sure you know Byron Katie, uh, Jeff Foster, people like that, who had an instant alignment. They just dropped on the floor, and I, I think Jeff Foster said once, yeah, he opened the, do the door in his pajamas early in the morning, and said, what am I doing here? And that was his shift. He just, it, suddenly, he knew he could, uh, it, everything was relative. He said, okay, I'm opening the door in my pajamas. And everything that was charged before fell away. Um, we had a speaker yesterday was talking about this dissolving all karma. For this guy, it was gone. Byron Katie had the same experience after having a, uh, taken a lot of drugs, being really down, really sick and off. And um, she, she fell down um, on the floor next to her bed. And I think it was an insect that landed on her hand. And suddenly she saw the beauty of this whole universe and was mesmerized. And like, Wait a minute. And she got insights that have been guided her since then. And she's teaching now all over the world. And I think it's brilliant, but, but she can tell it can happen instantly. So it is something that is there. And that's why, you know, make a circle, go step into it and say, okay, I know I, kn I can discipline myself, I can allow this experience to be in the future, I'm clean, I'm aware, I can carry all the weight of everything that's in me, in my story, my life story, and I can step back in the now and feel safe and secure because I know this is in my, my potency. Right. Why? But it takes time. The thing right now is the another um, aspect that is keeping us back is the fact that uh, enlightenment and, well, the whole healing business went a little bit over the top to my uh, impression. If there is so much going on in the business of uh, 
cosmetics and yoga and travels and cruises to be healed. And uh, there's so much money going on in that world. Uh, and for a lot of people, it will be okay because they won't have the possibilities to get beyond it. It is uh, for some souls that's where they go, that's where they get, and they won't get any further. Um, but for people like you, and for let's say 20% of the world, it is possible to be, go beyond that, and that's the thing. Um, the lot of, a lot of the story. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, a lot of the stories about healing are about healing the emotional and the physical and the spiritual and the karmic issues, and not about changing the world in a way that we can really change the frequency that we live in. And that's the thing that I want you to work on, not for the sake of yourself only, but because you are the world. And um, I'm a little put back by this whole love and light story that I was part of. I admit it, I was part of this love and light. We have to enlighten ourselves and learn how to be kind and loving and caring. I don't care about that anymore. I care about how true am I. I care about how real am I. I care about where can I center myself in knowing that it is really me without letting anything outside me not be present. So it is also beyond meditation. You go beyond meditation. It is, if you meditate, you can really make a nice connection between the earth and the heavens and say, okay, I'm, I'm a channel. I, I can be anywhere on this radar. I can choose to be as high as I want. And I know people who are very good at it and they will have a radiant light around them, which inspires a lot of people. But we have to radiate into the dark. We have to have more than meditation on a, on a pillow somewhere, on a cushion, uh, and on a nice uh, vacation in Portugal or Greece. We have to have meditation here and now. We have to be able to walk wherever we are in meditation. We have to walk in, in awareness that goes beyond meditation. It's not meditating anymore. It is being in every cell of this universe, every moment of every day. And allowing that to happen means that you really have to be in love, be in creation and be with your soul intent. The soul has an intent to be here totally, 100%, and the soul is so much bigger than you are. No, wrong. Gary Sukhav was asked where is, he, he wrote his beautiful book, The Seed of the Soul, and Oprah Winfrey asked him, can you tell me where the soul is? And he said, can you tell me where the soul isn't? And allow the sensation that those words have into your system and feel the vibration that it brings to your whole being, knowing that your soul is in every, 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 every cell in this place, in everybody that you see, in this whole, in the whole, oh, the whole town, the whole world. You soul is in everything and as soon as you start rehearsing and experiencing this sensation, Nothing can really harm you. What harms you is fear. The fear of being left alone, the fear of being outside this unity. But you can't be outside this unity because it's there. And say, so, yeah, but then I die. Well, so what? So what? I, I don't want anybody to shoot me right now because that would spoil, that would spoil my day, definitely. <laughs> But allowing myself to be first fearful to die and then allow myself to step away from it, I know, 
wrong. You cannot step away from it. You can only create a circle and step into it. I can only step into the fear of dying. And the fear of dying is vanished if we allow our soul intent to be eternal. And it is from this eternal field of energy that not only our life gets its form and shape and expresses itself, it's also where we can do the healing and express ourselves in such a profound way that it heals the world. But we have to be able, we have to allow this fear of dying. We have to be committed to die every second of the day. I thought it was going to be a happy story. This is a happy story. This is a very happy story. Because if you are not afraid of dying anymore, you can live to the full, to the fullest. And I'm so pleased that I witnessed some people go through this process. I've seen people die, which was a beautiful, beautiful gift. The most beautiful gift. So pure and so impressing because it opened a gate that is there every time, but it was so clean and clear and no disturbance and no only a beautiful light going through from one dimension to another, that was it. And I have to say that what is really, you know, the dark is present right now. So the invitation to go in it is eminent. And I have to tell you that I experienced a beautiful thing uh, just shortly. I was with Miles, and he went to interview a targeted individual. He was in a bad state, this guy, um, really had gone through experiences that you don't want, you don't wish upon anybody. And Miles went there to do one of his interviews. Uh, wrong timing, wrong place, wrong this, wrong that. But there was a call that Miles picked up from this guy who was really, really in the darkest, suppressed, and and uh, it wasn't. How do you say? He wasn't allowed to be anything else than dark. He was kept in the dark by his surroundings. And that made him quite a challenge for Miles to go and interview. But Miles went there and he went down on his knees and interviewed, and he didn't interview. He talked to the guy, but he listened. And he listened with his heart and not with his ears. And I could see the guy in the dark being light for a moment and dark again. And Miles was still there and the guy lightened up. And he was as present as anybody could be. And I was in awe because this guy showed me how to be the spark, to be the white dot in the yin-yang sign and say, I'm here. I will remain here. Whatever, however dark it gets, I'm here. And it needs a guy like Miles and others that are courageous enough to, to face every dark spot present right now and love it and then encounter the light in the dark, because as long as that happens, they cannot get us. Thank you very much, you're very brave. Okay. Please allow all the sensations that you're having now to go through you. 
your head, but let it sink into your heart and let it sink into your feet. Put your tailbone down and really direct it into the earth and connect with the crystals in the earth. Allow your own silence to fill you. Allow it to heal anything that is disturbing you. Just watch it become a color, become light. Let your shoulders hang. Breathe. And by touching your heart, you will know where to center. Breathe. And let all the energies of today be part of you and your silence and your solitude. You're amazing, you're brave, you're courageous. Embrace it. Breathe in, and breathe out and get good, sit in your seat, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I Thank you very it. much. I love the silence. It's, it's such a filled silence. I, I don't know if you... It, and this, this is powerful. Well done. Well done. Thank you.